Hey guys, Mr. Pokey here, back with another video and welcome to the second episode of Pokey Bro, which is my server, the Pokey's Village Hongai Stario PV Tournament, this time featuring Sarah versus Kite. Subscribe! As you guys would have seen from my previous video, we had the Aracon versus Kite duo. And the difference between my PvP against the other PvP format is that you only have one try, right? There's no resets, right? There's no such thing as strategizing. The moment you do your ban and picks, give your team some relics and then you have to go, right? There's absolutely no resets. I've seen that from the previous video, it has been doing pretty well, right? So hope to see even more of this in the future. If you guys would like to engage in this kind of content, feel free to hop on to my Discord at discord.gg4 slash Pokies Village where we are showing quite a big amount of interest in Hongai Star PvP ever since the beginning of Pokies Bro. So now this is going to be episode two and jumping straight straight into our draft right here you can see uh we do have the the bed and pick here sarah is gonna go okay with the king yun doctor ratio luo cha sparkle argenti japart march 7th and topaz up against right against kaede's ranmei huen huen silver wolf pella bronya Qingxue, clara and one more unit is going to be lynx so we have a very very interesting battle from a Zotzer ratio and topaz i believe with a argenti as another dps up against the clara hyper carry as well as the ching chue hyper carry let's see what is the performance gonna be this is gonna be a full battle instead of the previous battle where we only showed one side of memory of chaos 12 right all right chat without further ado let's just get into it because this is gonna be the full match right this is gonna be the full match and our very first is going to be sarah featuring her build uh that's gonna be a luo cha sparkle doctor ratio and topaz on the side one you can see very very relatable idolins e1 s1 topaz with a e1 s1 argenti uh march running the day one japan rocking the full shion light cone and team win rocking the e six featuring an s5 dance 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 and for our very first half sarah is gonna go ahead straight into battle so now we can go ahead and see dr ratio going up against the dinosaur doing absolutely zero damage six thousand damage on a single scale because the dinosaur takes ridiculously little there's no damage there's it's almost zero. Oh my goodness. The dinosaur just... Okay, this is just a mechanic of the dinosaur because if you do not break the dinosaur's uh, toughness bar, your team basically deal close to absolutely zero damage. And you can see here, uh, our team is taking a beating, but because we do have Lord has passive field up, uh, we are not going to face into any issues whenever we do uh, go ahead and hit the enemies, right? And it's going to be good for us because for both Dr. Ratio and Topaz with their high frequency of attacks, you can see that uh, Lord has passive field should be very, very comfortable to generate the sustain needed for our entire team and now sarah is gonna go ahead and cast ratios ultimate on the dinosaur in order to break the dinosaur as soon as possible so that we can actually start dealing some semblance of damage because if we were to not do any damage if we're not to put the toughness bar, we're not just gonna okay then finally the dinosaur breaks and finally we get a hundred and thirteen thousand damage on the dinosaur 51,000 on the topaz not very respectable if i can say so myself topaz is still gonna focus fire on the dinosaur uh dropping down the fire toughness bar with another thirty-seven thousand from the numbi but now that she has broken both targets uh we should be able to see additional damage sparkle is gonna go ahead and use her skill on doctor ratio and now doctor ratio is gonna use his skill on the ice fatty because we do have one more stack on the dinosaur which we can proc using lore all right so they want to focus fire on the ice fatty first as soon as possible uh still have a little bit of health left unfortunately and i'm he's gonna eat one of the minions and he's gonna do a tremendous amount of damage next turn if they don't kill it enough time uh, at this point we should still be quite safe because Rocha does have the passive healing but after this turn we are going to lose the passive field so it's gonna be all up to us uh to see if we can survive all right now i think it should be very very comfortable both units are dang yeah, it should be a very comfortable two cycle. Topaz should be able to kill here very, very nicely. Um, shouldn't use Topaz ultimate. Daughter Richard is going to go ahead, use another follow up, and Dinosaur should die over here. Yep, there it is. So it's a very clean two cycle clear for the first half. 
activating Topaz ultimate instantly. And we should see Sparkle's ultimate being cast because we are completely out of skill points. There we go. So she's going to cast the ultimate right back to four skill points. And then we're going to cast... Oh, five skill points because we do have Bronya's Angel Icon. So we're going to buff up Daughter Ratio. So we should be focusing on the Dinosaur, right? Because if we don't focus... Oh, we are going for Cocodia instead of the Dinosaur. Interesting. So we're actually going to let the Dinosaur live. Um, I guess it's to... I'm actually not very sure. I feel like we should have just break the dinosaur. So just do absolutely no damage if we don't kill the dinosaur. And now we're going for the dinosaur again to cut. Oh yeah, I'm a little bit confused with Sarah's targeting. It's a little bit weird, but it's okay, I guess. Because as long as we survive, we survive. Right? So it is what it is. Uh, luckily, Coconut didn't target the same person. The daughter is getting dangerous. And oh my god, that was so lucky. That was so if that... Oh my god, that, that was so, so, so lucky. <laughs> if that dinosaur killed Ratio right there, then it would have been over. But because we actually did not get a single from the dinosaur, that's why we survived. Okay, so now we're in a very comfortable situation because we do have Lord Shots and Beast Talent right up again. And now Dr. Ratio should be able to break the dinosaur in the next turn. Unfortunately, the dinosaur is not weak to fire, so Tobet's follow-up attacks from Numbi is not going to be dealing the full potential over here, which is another reason why Dual DPS is not very strong because uh, if you're not mentioning the same weakness, then a huge chunk of the kit is going to be wasted. But luckily for Cocolia, uh, she is weak to fire, so that's going to be dead. Spargo is going to cast the ultimate once again and finally using a skill on Daughter Ratio and this time she should finally break the dinosaur using Lord Shah. and now we can finally do substantial damage onto the dinosaur using Sparkle's skill into a Daughter Ratio follow-up. Very very nice. 38,000 into a follow-up with 107,000. Very very clean with a Tobit is going to go here for the Coconut. Oh my god she gets frozen! Oh my god that's terrible! Oh my god that's so bad! Oh my god that's... Oh my god I have no idea. Oh my god wait that's so bad! The dinosaur is going to recover! The dinosaur is going to recover next turn. If they don't kill the dinosaur this turn, the dinosaur is going to recover. And the toughness bar is going to go... Oh my god, this, this is so bad. I, I have no idea. Okay, Daughter Ratio is cleansed. Okay, luckily we have to... But we have to use a skill point. This one is... There's no choice. Okay, now you cast Daughter Ratio out on the Kukla. Okay. Sparkle is going to buff Daughter Ratio. He should still be able to kill the dinosaur though. He's dangerously low at this point. I believe he should be able to kill the dinosaur here. Yep. Into a follow-up. Very, very, all right. No, we're, we're still good. We're still good. But I do believe that it is not enough to break Cocolia, and we have to face the Cocolia ultimate. But I don't think it's gonna be that big of a deal, especially if we have Rocha's passive healing. Um, yeah, I don't think we're gonna die here. Very, very clean ultimate. <laughs> Oh my god, okay, we're still good, we're still good, we're still good. Yeah, I think at this point, we should see a very, very safe clear. Um, yep, uh, Kokora is gonna break from this. Um, yeah, the Okay, now it's fine, it's fine, it's fine, now it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. I think with one more follow-up attack from Daughter Ratio, Kokura should be close to, if not dead, over here. Uh, one hit here, two hit here. Luacha with one more hit. Nah, I think we should be good enough here, right? We're a little bit laggy, but I think it's fine. If he gets the kill, then we can save one more cycle. But if it's not enough, then it'll be very... Oh, missing. Oh, <laughs> oh my god, imagine. Okay, because of the memory of Kill we actually... All right, so that is going to be just barely four cycle clear on the first half featuring Dr. Ratio, Topaz, Sparkle, and Watcher. That is almost on a five cycle, but that was a pretty clean four cycle. All right, so now continuing to the second half. The second half with Adventurite. This is going to be where the money is going to be, right? Starting on to a very standard start here. March 7 is going to go ahead and use her basic attack probably because we do still have our trees of the corner. Yep, basic attack. Just lower the toughness bar overall. Our gen is going to cause a skill. Getting the ultimate should be a Pretty big amount with Timmy's buff. 60k into a... <clears throat> Alright, 139,000. Uh, it is what it is because the, the Fatty Bomb Bomb is not with the physical. So it is not a lot of damage. And unfortunately, it is what it is. But we should be able to sustain quite well since we have Japart Shield ready. Keep in mind, this is going to be a double sustain comp with both March 7th and Japart. So I have absolutely no doubt that Sarah will be able to clear this. But the question is, how fast are they going to clear this? Because we do have double sustain. So this might actually take quite a while. March 7 is going to go ahead. Cast the freeze. Didn't quite get it on the ice fatty. Uh, even if we were to get hit by the minions, it's okay. Because we do have Japart shield, which is quite tanky. And we also have March 7 shield. We should be more than enough when it comes to the sustain category. My only concern, like I said just now, is going to be the clear speed. Because... The only buffers that we have in terms of energy is Tingyun and Argenti. Without any other buffers, the ultimate damage might suffer a little bit, especially when you consider that the Ice Fatty himself, he is not... Sorry, not the Ice Fatty. The IPC Fatty is not weak to physical, so that's going to be a little bit worse. Tingyun's going to cast the ultimate here. Argenti needs to hold on a little bit longer, probably two more skill cards before he can finally get his... Um, 
I'll do my backup again. Unless he gets hit over here, which would be very... Unless it's... Uh, yeah, not quite enough. You need to get hit here, otherwise he's not going to get enough to cause the enhanced ultimate, which is desperately need right now. Our uh, team is going to go ahead and cause a basic attack, breaking the enemy. Or maybe not not breaking the enemy. An interesting choice here. Uh, okay, he actually gets it by the minion, so he actually can cast his enhanced ultimate now. Not sure what Sarah... Okay, now finally, they let go of Argentine's enhanced ultimate, breaking the target. 372,000 excellent, excellent damage from only a team green as the buffer. Japar is going to go ahead and probably use the skill here. Yep, dealing a little bit more and generating more energy for ultimate. Um, Both targets should be close to dead. Taking one hit from the Ascender one because we do have quite a little bit of shield. We don't really want to waste Japar's shield. So Japar is only going to cast the skill after getting hit, which will maximize the skill's effective coverage, right? So March 7 is going to go ahead and cast the ultimate. Freezing, not quite freezing. It is what it is, but it doesn't really matter because the guy should be dead by now. The Ascender one, one more skill for Argentine should be the kill. Yep, there it is. And now it is all left to the IPC fatigue. Now, this is going to be a little bit problematic because this dude does not have physical weakness. So how is Sarah going to deal with this? Using the basic Argenti out instead. That is a very interesting choice because it did pretty much zero damage. Absolutely stuff. Zero purpose over there. Uh, I probably would have waited for the enhanced of them, but it is what it is. Uh, might be a little bit of a misplay. So going ahead into the freeze for Japar uh, should still be fine. We should not see any issues when it comes to the break. Mars 7 is going to counter attack and freeze all the mobs very, very nicely. Argenti is going to go and cast the skill over here. Now imagine we had Argenti's enhanced ultimate, then we probably can kill this in this wave. Yeah, um, now I'm pretty sure he, I'm pretty sure he still takes it down in, in 23 though. I don't think it's gonna be quite far off, right? Uh, let's, let's see. Okay, yeah, he, all right, they definitely, all right, he definitely dies here. So one more and Argenti's ultimate should be enough to clear this one didn't really quite get the freeze, but it should still be fine. Jopar getting dangerously low on like 50% HP, but it's fine because March 7 is E6. So uh, a shield from March 7 should still slowly heal Kingwing back up to full. Argenti. Uh, well, one more enhanced ult 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 ultimate for Argenti, who's definitely going to get killed. So he's going to cast a skill here into an enhanced ultimate. Hitting all targets, getting a lot of energy back, and that is going to clean up this phase at 23 cycles, going to Argenti with roughly 6 cycles on the clock, right? Uh, March 7 is going to cause a freeze here, gets the freeze, Argenti cause a skill. At this point, I'm not going to lie, it's going to get a little bit boring, guys, because it's a double sustain. It's basically like if you guys play Pokemon, it's like the Toxic Storm meta, right? If you guys play Toxic Packs, uh, Trick War, all the time, it's just stalling out, slowly clean the opponent. And the question is, how long is this going to take to actually get the clear? Editor, throw in the ad break. Uh, use code POKEY for 10% off. Use code POKEY for 10% off. You can get it for 10% off for gamer subs. You can get it for 10% off like your official whole merch for Hongai Shop. You can join Discord at discord.g4. That's POKEY. You can add the enjoying the discount for uh, HSRPB content. Uh, check out my stream at Discord. <laughs> check out my stream at Twitch.tv. Uh, I'm streaming every single day. Argentine banner is coming up tomorrow. So, uh, <laughs> Adventurine's banner is coming up tomorrow. We are banning double sustain. We are banning March 7th. This is, this is too boring, right? This is way too boring to pick us. But now we're going to go into phase, the final phase. Uh, we are currently at nine cycles into the battle. I would be very surprised if we are going to see a 10 cycle clear from, from Sarah. But let's just see what happens over here. Casting a skill from Team Yuin using a March 7. Yep, that's still pretty clean. Japar is going to go ahead, use a skill. Didn't really quite get the freeze, but it should be enough. March 7, casting the ultimate over here. Not waiting for his um, dice roll. Very interesting choice. Uh, I probably would have waited for March 7's ultimate with the dice rolls to get the full points. But now that we didn't wait, then it is what it is. Definitely going to get hit over there. Argenti, one hit. Should be able to get all the dices. Excellent, excellent. March 7, casting a shield onto Team in case she dies. Japar, uh, definitely going to lose the bet over here as well. Yep, 2 out of 9. It is what it is. One bomb. And then now, they are going to... All 3 of them are going to get hit. But we should be enough to sustain, right? Because... Ooh. Oh my god, Tingyun! Oh my god! Oh my god, Tingyun! Is she dead? <gasps> the dance and dance! The dance 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 actually clutched and brought up March 7th and Japart! That is just absolutely ridiculous. Okay, the dance 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 actually clutched out because without the dance dance dance, I'm pretty damn sure team would have passed away right there and then. Um, Sarah once again decided to not go for the enhanced ultimate. Uh, at this point, Kiwi shouldn't face any issue. 
Uh, probably would have used your parts ultimate myself personally, but uh, you know, it is what it is. Doesn't really matter that much because when it comes to sustain, Sarah should not face any issues. So now we're gonna go back to the grind again. Using a freeze to interject between the gamble, that is a pretty good play over there. It's a little bit of well sustained, except we can do with March 7th ultimate as well. Insane. So once again, casting into the gamble phase, uh, March 7th is just gonna shield him again and again. Uh, Japar probably just gonna basic attack because we don't really need it. What the f Nah, 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 that, that is bullshit, that is, that is bullshit, nah, 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 that, that, that is, ab that is, that is, that, nah, 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 that, that is ridiculous, that is absolutely ridiculous, nah, 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 oh my god, oh my god, RJD! Is it enough? Okay, we're good, we're good, we're good, we're good, we're good, we're good, okay, we're, we're still good, we're still good, we're still good, we're still good, we're still good. We're still good, we're still good, we're still good. Okay, that's fine. Shooting Arch, okay, yep. Finally causing the Enhanced Ultimate. Should be able to deal a considerable amount of damage here. That's quite considerable, guys. That is quite cons- 26 long. That is quite considerable. What the f Wait, why? Why did it show- Oh my god, that has to be the misplay of- Oh my god, Sarah. Oh my god, Sarah. The Japars I was right there. Expect the unexpected, right? You could be the world's best goddamn zero cycler. But when situation like this happens to you, when you have no resets, no retries, then it is, it is what it is. Like genuinely. Oh my god, this is not looking good. If Argenti dies here, Sarah might just straight up get disqualified. I'm not sure if Japars shield is going to be enough. Oh my god. Okay. Argenti has to clear here. Okay, I think it's enough. This should be a clear. Oh my god, that was... Oh my god, that was way too close. Oh my god, that was the way... Oh, okay. Alright, and a 14th cycle from Sarah in this memory of Kios 12. Once again, a little bit of a recap. Doctor Ratio, Topaz, Sparkle, Lorcha for the first half. And then for the second half, we have Argenti, March 7, Japart, and Team Yuin. And I hope that this goes to show that even with double sustain, with March 7th and Japart, there's still a chance your Team Yuin will just get in the ass in game because she alone is the Aeon of Preservation. Absolutely insane. Great attempt by Sarah. And now we can move on to the next contestant, which is going to be Kaede. All right, Kaede, right? Okay, this is a little bit loud. I'm just going to tone this down a little bit. So we do have Huen Huen running multiplication. E1 Huen Huen multiplication. Bronya with the uh, S5 Fast and Future. E0 Bronya. Qing Chue running Genius Repose. Genius Repose Qing Chue. And a silver wolf running the E1 silver running the event light cone. Clara with the E4 battle pass light cone. Links with the standard links. There's nothing much. Rame with the E1 S1 Rame. And finally, Pella with the S5 resolution E6 Pella. Right? So now, let's see. The record the beat for Kaede is going to be 14 cycles. The record the beat for Kaede is going to be 14 cycles. Let's see if Ching Chue, the gambler, actually manages to um, surpass expectations because keep in mind in pokey's brawl in this pp you have no resets right? you don't have like a billion resets so let's see how many skill points he's gonna use here one skill point two skill point three skill point four skill point very very nice four skill point absolute highest damage percentage bar from four rows as well as getting the outer key kaede must have prayed to 20 different gods and goddesses to get this God tier change your RNG. Going for a very nice 58,000 follow up into a 45. <laughs> That's very impressive damage. That's very impressive damage. So now, Bronya, she has a basic attack because otherwise, we just don't have enough skill points. You can't be using Bronya skill on Chinchu because she's just gonna run out of skill points. Uh, going for a summons over here, not too much to be shed here. A little bit of a speed debuff on Chinchu and Silver, but it should still be fine. Huan Huan casting a skill, cleansing the target, so it should be completely fine because we also have an E1 Huan Huan casting ultimate, getting the entire team's ultimate up. Bronya is a little bit off, but it's still fine. Slight misplay because the Silver's ultimate was a little bit slow, so we could have gotten an additional energy over there, but it should be fine. Casting a defense down onto the Ice Fatty instead of the Dinosaur. Uh, Bronya is finally 
going to cast the buff on the change right here. Yep, absolutely. With a buffed up ultimate. Let's see how many skill points are we have. But at this point, change also has an ultimate, so there's no loss over here, right? So get in the out, okay? What is this luck? What is this luck, chat? What the actual f is this luck? That is some bullshit. That is some that is some bullshit. That is some that is some bullshit. Nah nah nah. That is some bullshit. That is some bullshit. That is some bullshit. Uh nah, it is what it is. Alright, so Alright, yeah, okay, yep, it's stupid shield we find uh so far going to the second cycle now. Uh QQ now she's gonna be in a little bit of a nasty there's no way he gambles here. He has a basic attack. There's no way he gambles. Yep. Uh going for the ice fatty instead of the dinosaur over here. The silver is gonna go ahead and cast this on the breaking this with the quantum break that's gonna deal a substantial amount of damage as well as the entanglement that's gonna be very nice. Now Broya casts her skill onto Ching Chue. Can she get a four of a kind with three of a kind in he gets out of it again? There's no way. There's no just roll better, your more bend the guy. There's I'm speechless. I'm I am I'm 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 speechless. Alright. Alright. Uh Blood actually used the ancient China CN 3000 year technique of rolling better. Ain't no way. He gets out Turkey again. <laughs> you know, despite all that if Chinchu doesn't want to crit, then she doesn't want to Crit. It is what it is, boys. It is what it is, right? If she doesn't... Wait, is she gonna go for the... <laughs> 72... <laughs> I mean, it, it is what it is. Uh, yeah, there's a little bit of a warm bomb situation there, so nothing much can be done. Uh, it is what it is. That's what you get for playing Chinchu, right? Okay, anyways, um, Bronya has to skill here. Oh, sorry, basic attack here because you are gonna run out of skill points. Huang Huang casting the skill, Silver Wolf going to do the normal basic attack. Um, now she can actually cast her skill onto Qing Chue because we do have the ultimate, so there's nothing much to be lost here. Okay, never mind, I take it back. Uh, that was a very interesting choice. Man is an actual gambler. I'm not sure why he didn't use Bronya's skill there. Oh no, is he gonna get punished? Oh my god, he fuck oh my god, he was saved by the ultimate chat. Yo, without the ultimate dad, that would have been Jover. Without the ultimate dad, that would have been Jover. Alright, let's just keep it about without the ultimate, that would have that would have hundred percent been Jover, right? Saved by the ultimate. It is what it is, right? So now we have Seal Wolf casting the ultimate onto Cocodia instead of the dinosaur. Okay, interesting. And then Ching uh Huang Huang is gonna cast the ultimate, giving our entire team the 40% attack buff as well as the energy buff to give Bronya her ultimate. And now Bronya is gonna cast the ultimate so that Ching Chi herself can get the crit damage buff. Seal Wolf should probably cast a skill because we do have enough skill points, especially when Chinchu already has four of a kind. Remember when Chinchu has four of a kind? Okay, not going for the Seal Wolf skill here. I guess he doesn't really need it. Um, I, um, it is what it is. Uh, going for the fifty-two thousand, not getting out of key. I mean, like, at this point, it is just you. You can't really do anything. But if Chinchu does not have out of key. The damage just falls off a goddamn cliff, especially in this kind of situations, right? So we just have to deal with it. Uh, Huang Hue going for the basic attack, a little bit of a MOC damage, two two hundred thirteen thousand. That's kind of crazy. Um, now we have four skill points. Can we get the four of a kind here? Get the outer key and get the four of a kind. Excellent, excellent. That's just really, really lucky there. Um, okay, very, very nice damage. Uh, Seal Wolf is probably gonna use a basic here into an ultimate. Should be able to break. Okay, yep, there it is. Breaking the Cocodia very, very nicely. Uh, my man wants to go for the target of killing Cocodia first instead of the Eye Dinosaur, which is completely fine as well. Uh, Huang Huang casting a skill because we do have an E1 Huang Huang, so we do want to get 100% coverage on the buff up time. Cocodia coming back up very, very fast. Casting Huang Huang's ultimate giving should give King your ultimate as well. Oh, just barely, but it should be knife. Uh, because if you're changing your the skill, she can still get a little bit of energy, so hopefully that's enough. Steel Wolf continuously using her basic attack. Can you get the ultimate here? Can you get the ultimate here? Not going for the ultimate. Okay, now she gets the ultimate, so Bronya is going to cast the ultimate and then use the skill on the change. Imagine if it gets four of a kind here, that's completely wasted. Please don't get four of a kind. Please don't get four of a kind. And there it is, and there it is, right? This is why, this is what happens when you change right? Even when you give her four skill points, if she gets four of a kind early, then you can't really do anything about it. And there it is. Now she's not gonna have Autaki, and it's just gonna be a very normal 48,000. Uh, I was just, 
<laughs> yep, uh, Pride Wing Fist bomb down to C tier. Thank you very much. Okay, but anyways, yeah, now Hue Hue is going to cost the skill again because Chinyu is dangerously low. Uh, Seo is going to use her ultimate on the Kokoda, I believe, because she, at this point, you might as well just kill Kokoda as soon as possible because Kokoda is almost close to death. So going for the freeze for Teo, but it's completely fine because we do have Hue Hue's cleanse. So no issues whatsoever. We should be able to break Kokoda here if we... Uh, I probably will personally use Seal Wolf's ultimate there because imagine if we do not get four of a kind here. That would be very, very bad. I I personally would have used Seal Wolf's skill there. What is my man doing? What is my man doing? Oh my god, my man is a filthy... F you know what? Nah, I... Nah, I'd gamble, guys. Nah, my man is an actual gambler. Uh, personally, I would have definitely not tried to risk it there. Just skill with Silver Wolf into an ultimate. We have guaranteed Kokolia's kill. It is what it is. And now we cast Silver Wolf's ultimate onto Kokolia. Uh, I mean, no difference, but it's very, very wasted because that ultimate could have won to the dinosaur instead. Uh, let's just see how many... Oh, man, at this point, I don't think we're going to be able to get this unless we get ridiculously lucky here. Can we get the kill? She doesn't crit again! Can she get the clear here? No Altaki. No. Oh my god. It's not enough. I don't think it's enough. I don't think this is enough, chat. Unless... Looks, oh my god. You know what? Nah, I gamble, right? That was actually enough for also a four cycle clear. I stand corrected. Insane, ridiculous luck with Chin Chia, by the way. That is absolutely insane. A very, very nice four cycle clear. And now we're going to move on to the second phase with Clara, Pella, Lynx, and Ron May. Uh, if you guys have seen from the previous PvP Pro, you know that A Day is going to be a certified Clara main running the E4 Clara, clinching a two cycle clear against them in the previous memory of Chaos 12. So let's see how this team is going to fare uh, with out the previous supports and now instead we're going to be having Rame, Pella and Lynx with Clara. We unfortunately do not have Ting Yun this time so we're not going to have a 100% ultimate uptime on our Clara. So let's just see how this team is going to perform. Uh, Lynx is going to go ahead and probably cast the enhanced okay not cast the enhanced horn value it is what it is. Um, ooh, 52k that's very very nice. Uh, Clara herself is actually quite squishy if I can say so myself. We're already down to 2000 HP but we do have Five targets over here. Very clean. 180,000 against five targets. Casting the ultimate this time. We should be able to get a quite a sizable amount of heals and damage from Lynx and the Clara. 183,000 instantly clearing one of the mob. Pella is going to go ahead and cast the rest down to instantly break the target. 100... Wait, what? 100,000 break and there it is. Uh, I mean, yeah, that's a little bit ridiculous. Okay, so now Lynx is going to go ahead and probably cast... I just, we're just not going to be using Link skill whatsoever in this situation. One more counter, 155,000, very, very clean. Hitting Links, unfortunately not hitting Clara, so uh, a little bit of a wasted damage opportunity, but it should be still fine. Rame is going to cast a skill here because we have quite a bit of skill point. This entire team is generally just very, very skill point friendly, so not much to be going forward. Uh, first cycle is over, going to the second cycle. Um, breaking with Rame's break, Pella is going to cast the ultimate to drop the AoE defense down, breaking the target, and now Lynx is finally going to use a skill on the Clara for the first time. Clara's skill should be able to do quite a lot of damage and just kill everybody, right? 174,000 on Clara's skill. Insane. Oh, uh, summoning more goons, we should still be completely fine. As long as we get enough counters off, we should be completely fine over here. I don't know if it's enough to go into the first wave. I don't think it's going to be enough. Yeah, there's a little bit of a situation with Clara, which is if she doesn't get hit, the damage doesn't come out. So... Ooh, okay, that's a little bit unfortunate. If Clara actually stood in the middle, she would have gotten the counter off. But because Clara is standing all the way to the side, we're not able to get the counter attack because uh, there was no AoE damage hitting Clara from that specific angle. So a little bit of a wasted damage opportunity there going to the... Third cycle now, casting plus ultimate, but we're definitely going to get the clear in this wave, I believe. So we shouldn't face much issues over here. Pella should try to generate a lot of energy. Yep, so we can go into the second phase with the ultimate backup as soon as possible. Clara skill should be able to kill everybody over here because this should be a fully buffed like Clara skill. 100, oh, a little bit close, but it's still fine. Rame cast ultimate, gets the buff. 
Use a basic attack and that should be it. And going to the second wave, right? I sincerely doubt this is not enough. Excellent. Now we go into the second wave with um, almost full energy on Clara and Pella. We shouldn't see much of a difference. Pella with a basic attack into an a ultimate. Dropping the defense down. Lynx should definitely cast a skill here because it's a four. Okay, we, I guess we just don't need a skill. It is what it is. Um, yeah, see, if we actually cast Lynx skill there, then that would have hit Clara and we have gotten a little bit more mileage on Pella because we have so many skill points. I don't see why we didn't cast Lynx skill there, but it is what it is. So Pella, sorry, Clara going to a skill 64,000, quite considerable, using the ultimate here to get into the enhanced state. And now she's going to counter every single time. Um, Pella, basic attack. Uh, Lynx is... I have no idea. Lynx is going to cast a heal onto Pella this time to save her from the damage in case she passed away. Um, going to aim Clara, but with a double roll, we should be pretty safe, right? <laughs> Alright, I take it back. Uh, I mean, like, sometimes in life, you know, you just gotta roll better, right? I mean, that's what you get from rolling so well with Chin Chat. Then you just kinda... Uh, hidden pity is a real thing, right? Hidden pity is a real thing. So we are sh going to be seeing a, a basic attack. Yep. Uh, getting the break over here. Um, Lynx is probably gonna use. Okay. Interesting choice. At this point, I think it's pretty good to just basic attack because we don't really. Yep, we can just basic attack. Rame cast the ultimate into a skill. That should be the best way to go about it to ensure the higher ultimate uptime. Um, because we have quite a lot. Of, this team shouldn't face any skill point issues, so we should be a little bit more liberal in our skill point usage. Uh, Clara getting her turn back finally using a skill for a very nice 73,000. Uh, hitting Rame for one enhanced. Oh, the counter actually. Oh, the energy counter is actually so bad because now we don't have Clara's ultimate because of the energy drain. So that could be a little bit unfortunate, especially for the next wave when we cast into the gambler phase, right? Hitting Rame instead of Pella. Dude, dead ass, this entire battle, I think Ade only casted the taunt value on the Pella like once. Lynx only casted her skill on, on, on the Clara one time, which is very interesting. To say the least, right? Uh, once again, failing the dice roll, I mean, that's what you get for using all of your luck with Team Chess. So at this point, um, Lynx does have the ultimate so we can still cleanse herself away from the damage. But because the guy is not attacking, we're actually not going to get any damage from Clara until the guy attacks. So we are going to go into the ninth cycle from this round. Not quite enough. Uh, Lynx finally going to use a basic attack here because there will be a lot of skill points. This is definitely going to be enough. Okay, finally entering the second phase. Hitting the entire team with another counter. 53,000, not quite enough damage. Pella casting the ultimate onto the target. Um, casting the defense down. Probably want to use a skill here. Yep, there it is. Rame shoots a basic attack. Yep, because we're a little bit low on skill points. Casting the ultimate here. That's very, very normal. Lynx, are you going to cast a skill onto Clara this time? Finally! Okay, we finally get a skill onto Clara. But at this point, uh, we definitely need to get Pella's ultimate up. Oh my god! We didn't get Clara! Oh my god, not getting Pella's ultimate there was huge. In a bad way. Because we're missing so much value there. Oh my god, that was a little bit... Oh, that, that, I mean, it is what it is. Sorry. Now we can finally get our ultimate back up, so... Uh, just missed a little bit of an opportunity there. Casting the ultimate here uh, into a very nice debuff and now getting the Rame break. I think we should be able to clear it in the next wave. One basic attack from Lynx, another MOC debuff, one skill from Clara for 59,000. This should be game as long as we get the full set from Memory of Chaos, I believe. Another hit, one counter on Clara, very clean, 75,000. This is probably the last round. As long as we finish this, with the memory of Chaos debuff, I think we will be able to make it into a 11 cycle clear. So let's see what exactly we have over here. Rame hitting, definitely not gonna, it doesn't, it's gonna, not even gonna matter at this point. Lynx is gonna kill Pella. Hitting this. Winning the roll. Getting the thingy. Hitting the entire team. And unfortunately, we're gonna get. Frog and shoot. No, okay. Yep, the memory of Chaos debuff. Alright, so that is going to be a 11 cycle clear from Kaede. And with that, we have come to the end of our second ever Village Brawl, Pokey Brawl, Pokey Brawl 2. Name is still pending. I think I'm going with Pokey Brawl, right? So, very good effort from Kaede. Very good effort from Sarah. Once again, showing that uh, sometimes, even in a situation where there are no resets, you just gotta f*** it. 
and find out, right? You gotta ball, you gotta gamble, uh, because a lot of things could have happened and you would have never known until you try, right? So with that, we've come to the end of the episode two of Pokies Brawl. If you guys want to engage in this kind of content, feel free to join my Discord, discord.g for this Pokies video. We're very active community to Hong Kai on a daily basis, as well as to play the Hong Kai Story PvP in the village with all of the villagers, open to everyone open to anybody as long as you follow the rules, right? If you want to engage in any streams, that's twitch.tv or YouTube or YouTube or YouTube. I will stream every single day. Show you up on Discord. So that's all I have for today. All the best for Adventure and Pools. And I'll see you guys next time. Take care.